How's it going, everybody? This is Pete the Bush. Today, I'm going to talk about the lottery and how your participation in it affects your finances. People have this strange mentality where they think they might be lucky and somehow able to win more than others at the lottery. Millions of others also buy the lottery at that same round, and they also think that they're very lucky. However, I feel like most people that buys into it are not looking at it in the odds of winning standpoint. To me, buying a lottery ticket once in a while is okay because you're essentially buying hope and sort of buying a dream. Whenever you buy a ticket, there's a small chance that you're going to win. It kind of starts a good feeling. You kind of think about what's going to happen if you win. You can buy all these things that you ever wanted. You can think of the lottery ticket kind of like an emission or entertainment fee. You have this and you have that possibility to win that big prize. An important statistic to know is that 70% of all lottery winners actually go broke after five years of winning the prize. You can easily find a lot of quotes online from people that actually won the lottery saying that they wish they didn't win at all. This is really, really strange because anybody that did not win would wish that they win. That's why they're buying the lottery ticket. However, for the people that actually won, they, they actually went through the turmoil um, went through with friends and family trying to like suck the money out of them. A lot of this happened. If you read the stories, it's really quite frightening. And before you win, you never think about how bad it can be. I was just reading this instance where there was a boyfriend and girlfriend pair. One of them won the lotto and later on, they're not together anymore. And one of the couple came back and sued um, the other one saying that um, while they were together, they promised them a split of the lottery winnings if they ever won. Now guess what happened to that? This was a verbal agreement here and the girl still lost and they had to split the prize money and later on the girl also went broke. Now the fallacy is if you buy one lottery ticket, you have one chance of winning. If you buy 10 of them, you have 10 chances of winning, right? Everybody thinks that. This type of scaling does not work too well because you can essentially scale it to 1 million times, right? Let's say you buy 1 million tickets instead you can still only have about a one in about 260 chances of winning. Even though you spend $1 million on tickets alone, you are still not guaranteed to win. Now the odds of winning the jackpot for mega millions is actually one in 260 million. If the prize money is ever 260 million or more, you can theoretically think that you can buy 260 million tickets and when you actually win with one of them because you're guaranteed to win because you bought every single combination, then you're going to take home that prize money and essentially you'll break even. This means that the jackpot needs to be three or four times the odds of winning so that when you actually win, you actually take home whatever amount that is extra on top of that. Now you can probably write off the taxes on the lottery tickets that you bought in order to take home the winnings. There is a problem of being able to buy 260 million tickets because they essentially have to print all these out and somehow you have to um, I don't know, have like a hundred thousand machines printing a lot of tickets just nonstop because every single period is only, I don't know, three, four days. Then there's a logistics of actually getting enough tickets. There's also the possibility that another person would win the same jackpot, maybe two or three more people. That means you really, really need to make sure that the jackpot is two or three times more. So even if you break even and you split it among four people, then you would still break even because you can see this is a very dangerous thing to do. Even if it's technically possible, you can buy all the tickets there is and somehow, you know, maybe suddenly in this freak accident, five people won this jackpot. And then all of a sudden you spent 260 million and then you only get, I don't know, 220 million back because you have to split it in five. Then you essentially lost $40 million, even though you spent all this effort um, trying to get a lot of tickets. People have said that the lottery is sort of like a tax on stupid people because they're essentially paying all this money into this fund and yet they're not getting anything back. I think that the general population does not understand statistic enough in order to appreciate the fact that if you keep on buying into this lottery fund, you're essentially not going to um, get a guaranteed win. Now, I'm not going to bother you with actual statistical numbers, but I'm just going to go over the odds of winning in this chart over here. Now, in Mega Millions, you can see if you get the five numbers and also the mega number, six, all six numbers, the prize, I'm guessing it's about 100 million. It varies. The odds of winning that is 258 million to one. 
The expected return of that line is about 0.38. In other words, if you put in $1, you're expected to get 0.38 cents back. However, you cannot look at expected returns on this in a traditional manner because the odds are so high. No one in their lifetime is going to get near buying 260 million tickets. In statistics, for example, let's say you have a coin and you're flipping it. You might get a bunch of heads in a row and then a bunch of tails in a row, but then over a really long run, um, even in one out of two odds, you need maybe like a hundred toss or a thousand toss before you would have two numbers that are close to 50-50. This means that whatever odds of winning that you have, you need to repeat this maybe a hundred, a thousand times before you would reach that expected value. In playing the odds here, you might have a really wide fluctuation of how much you win and how much you lose. It is in the very, very long term that the statistic actually applies. So when you're playing the lottery, the more times that you play, the closer you are going to tend towards the expected value or expected return. I've highlighted the last four winning rows because the odds of winning there is actually low enough that you can um, repeat enough times to actually reach the expected returns. If you add all those up, you're expected to have a return of 0.1. So in the long run, if you put in $1 per ticket here, you're going to get 10 cents back. For example, if you buy 2000 tickets over the course of many, many years, you're essentially going to win some, okay? The total winnings that you're going to get back, it's going to be one tenth of the amount that you actually put in to buy the tickets. Now this is statistic. And if you take all of the people that ever play, this is going to be generally true. However, there's also going to be a few, very, very few that would actually win the jackpot win the $1 million prize, win the $5,000 prize even. So the deal here is for the first few tiers of winnings, you might be able to statistically reach the expected value. However, for those upper tiers of the winnings, you're never going to be able to play enough to actually get something back. The lottery is a bit worse than the casino because if you put $1 on black, you at least have a 49% chance of doubling your money. The lottery, on the other hand, if you put $1 in, the expected value that you get back, it's going to be about 10 cents instead. The average American spends about $300 a year on lottery tickets. This works out to be about $5 a week. Now, $5 a week over 50 years means you're gonna end up buying 13,000 tickets and the odds of winning will be one in about 19,915. Now, this is over the course of 50 years of you religiously playing the lottery. Now, one in 20,000, it's sort of like you're in a stadium full of people and then they draw a raffle ticket and you are the person that won. Instead to give you an idea how much money is wasted, if you put this $5, you know, invested and stuff, 8% compound over 50 years, this is $260 a year, you're gonna end up having $161,000 instead. So instead of buying a lottery, you go and stick this in a uh, index fund or something, you're gonna have a guaranteed $161,000 instead, instead of playing this lottery. As another example, I've seen plenty of people at a liquor store, they hand over $10, $20 and buy scratchers or tickets or whatever. I just look at that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's uh, you know some pretty huge spending on lottery tickets. Anyway, $20 a week, let's say $1 per ticket, you get 52,000 tickets. This is $1,040 a year, 8% compound over 50 years, means at the end of 50 years, if you don't do this and put it in an investment and get your 8%, you're gonna have $644,000. This is a guaranteed, um, well, not guaranteed, but um, a very high likelihood of getting the $644,000. And this is, you know, coming up very close to the second tier of winning where you win $1 million. If you bought lottery tickets, you're gonna have a one in 5,000 chance of winning versus if you just take this money, just take this cash and invest it instead, you're gonna have a much, much higher likelihood, much better than one in 5,000 certainly. And I'd say it's closer to like 99% sure that you will get about this much, the $644,000 instead of um, spending $20 a week on lottery tickets. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below. Let me know how much you spend on lottery tickets and maybe if this video sort of convinces you to not spend as much on lottery tickets anymore.
If you're interested in supporting my channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook or the service, you can cancel it before the subscription ends and you can still keep the audiobook and also help benefit this channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel directly, I have a Patreon over here where I give various perks at various contribution levels. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.